Good morning, friends. Uh, my name is uh, Raghu Rajgopal. I am the co-founder and CEO of Datri. Just like how uh, you know people uh, when they go through blood transfusion, you know you need to find a blood group match. And um, if you have a blood group matched donor, and if the donor is not available, then you will probably find alternate donors who could donate blood and you know, still be able to help the patient who's in need of a transfusion. What happens in certain diseases like, you know, leukemia, thalassemia, and uh, several other fatal blood disorders, which includes chronic granulomatous disease, hurlers, a number of diseases, all these diseases, first of all, can be cured. So there is a perception and there is a lack of awareness amongst a lot of people that you know, cancer, like blood cancer is not curable, but blood cancer is curable, thalassemia is curable, Hurlers is curable, CGD is curable, aplastic anemia is curable. A lot, lot of these diseases are all curable. But for the cure to take place, we need to have a matching donor. So when you have a matching donor, what we are talking about here is a genetically matched donor. The blood group does not matter here. What matters here is that the patient and the donor should have the same genetic type. And this genetic type is determined by what is called as an HLA. HLA stands for human leukocyte antigen. It is a marker on the gene. And in layman's terms, HLA means a biological identity of the human being. Like how we have a physical appearance, how we have a name. The biological identity of a human being is very unique. And we need to find somebody else with the same biological identity so that the patient can go through a transplant. So typically what happens in families is that the probability of finding a match from within the family is very, very low. It's less than 25%. And nowadays, you see a lot of families having only one child. So this becomes even more difficult to find a donor from within the family, within the cousins, and so on and so forth. So once you find the match, then the donor can go ahead and donate. So but where do these people go? When they cannot find a match from within the family, they need to look at a registry like Datri, where they can come and see if there is a donor that is registered with us, the donor whose details are available with us, the donor who has been completely high resolution HLA typed, which means we have the genetic information stored with us. So the, this is the critical part. So in 2009, when we started Datri, the situation in India was that there were several patients who were dying because they could not find a genetically matched donor. And there are a very, very few set of patients who could find a match from other registries in the world, like one in Germany and one in the US. And they would probably go through the transplant. But a number of patients, all uh, Indians, uh, in several parts of the country could not find a genetic match. So that is when we thought we should start a registry in India. In order to start a registry in India, there are two things that are important. Somebody who can actually uh, create this organization with passion somebody who wants to work for this cause, somebody who wants to save a lot of lives, and also partner with an organization that can provide the genetic typing capability, because that is something that was lacking in the country you know, at that point in time. And even now, the HLA typing uh, expenses, the costs are very, very high in India. So we partnered, we came together, Dr. Nezi Cherub and Dr. Su Yang Yang are the uh, founders of a lab called Histogenetics. And um, I am an entrepreneur. Um, I used to live in the US for about uh, 12 plus years. I came back to India and I'm still involved in a few other comp entrepreneurial ventures. So we, the three of us came together and we said, you know, we need to create this registry and we need to help a lot of Indians who are suffering. And that thought was a very exciting thought, and that's how the journey started in 2009. Uh, we did our first donor drive in Mumbai. We registered about 150 donors. And in the donor drive, we had a patient who was a volunteer who actually came and created awareness. So at that time, 
we did not have success stories to talk about we did not have you know examples to show we did not have these people who can actually pick up the phone and call the donors to actually register so that was the that was a tough journey we started there in 2009 and then 2010 we registered donors and 2011 was the first donor who actually donated blood stem cells in india a donor from orissa donated blood stem cells for a patient who was being treated in a hospital in velour called cmc um cmc velour is uh, one of the hospitals that has been actively doing unrelated transplants for a very long time now so that is how the journey started 2011 we did three people who donated and then 2012 um, about 12 people who donated so that's how it started increasing the donor um in order to first register with datri has to go through a few steps he fills up an application form he signs a consent form and then he takes a cotton swab sample and put it inside the mouth and you know he gives a sample so it's actually easier than brushing your teeth to register as a donor the registering of the donor is a very simple part and once you're registered we find your genetic match and then we store it in the database so this time i would like to welcome dr narendra agarwal from uh, in rajiv gandhi hospital uh, niharika from rajiv gandhi hospital dr gaurav karya thanks for making it from bl kapoor hospital so uh, the the donor can donate blood stem cells in two ways one is through the bone marrow and another one is through peripheral blood stem cells that is through the peripheral blood um the whole donation of blood stem cells through the bone marrow has been uh there since the 1960s so people used to donate bone marrow for their relatives and you know in the 1980s uh, the registry in the us started in the 90s early 90s the registry in germany started and we are very late in the game in india in 2009 we started datri uh in the last few years the process of donation has become much much more simpler more than 80% of the people who donate all over the world donate through the blood so what is called as the peripheral blood stem cell donation it's a very simple process i would uh, have uh, dr gaurav karya probably explain that a little later so uh, i wanted to just uh, show you some numbers um can i go to the next slide please gayatri yeah so in 2015 we uh, facilitated 59 transplants so just to give you an idea of what's happening in the world um, there are 12650 donors who have donated blood stem cells last year across the world and 4073 people have donated bone marrow and 3413 patients have been treated with cord blood you know as you know when uh, the babies are uh, born um, the parents have an option of uh, storing the cord blood and they can store cord blood in two ways one is called as a private cord blood bank and another one is called a public cord blood bank private cord blood bank is where you uh, store it and pay money every year and that will be useful for your own child and public is where you know you give it to the cord blood bank and it can be used by any patient anywhere in the world so there are about 3413 cord blood that happened last year so this is just to give you an idea on the landscape of what's happening in the world so there are the numbers are like really really big across the world and whereas in india as far as what datri has done we facilitated about 59 and it only amounts to about 0.46% of what's happening in the world from a peripheral blood stem cell collection perspective so now to happy stories um, our first very first donor from this ncr region um, unfortunately is not here today nikhil kumbar working in google he uh, got registered with us and um, the patient is rishi ingawale was uh, diagnosed with uh, cgd chronic granulomatous disease and um, he was uh, cured by nikhil um, nikhil donated in bl kapoor hospital this child was being treated in uh, chennai uh, interestingly both the donor and the recipient are maharashtrians and both are from pune so i guess somewhere they are probably related um, in their you know if you go to their great grandfathers and if you go through the uh, entire uh, tree you will probably find that there may be some relationship so this is nikhil and another interesting story ankit uh, is a resident of surat um, got diagnosed with aml um, was being treated in chennai a gujarati and um, we had our first donor in gujarat 
a 22 year old uh, young girl jinal patel who donated blood stem cells um, and you know she was very uh, supportive of this cause and um, you know i keep telling the story everywhere um, so jinal's uh, donation is very important because you know we had to convince her uh, parents had to convince her uh, fiance and her fiance's parents then her family doctor and then the community president because of the you know patel community so we had to convince a lot of people before actually she donated blood stem cells and both the donor and the recipient are doing extremely well they are now you know very close to each other mayur is another donor who i mean another patient um, being uh, you know who was diagnosed with all in pune and uh, he was uh, he works as a software engineer he uh, found a match uh, from another person by name ab ab is uh, Uh, hometown is from Cochin, but he donated in uh, Chennai, and now he works for Datri full time, and he is uh, helping us uh, recruit more and more donors in Cochin. So this is an interesting story. Uh, well, the girl that you see there, uh, Tang um, Saranya, she is uh, from a small village called uh, Bodi Naiknur in Tamil Nadu, and uh, she was the one who registered with the Datri during the drive that we did in our college, and then she was found to be a match uh, for a patient who is a 12-year-old boy. and then we had to uh, with a lot of difficulty go and trace her because i uh, you know she had eloped with her husband and her parents didn't know where she was and we had to literally spend like 2 3 days in the town there to actually go find her then she had a very supportive husband who agreed for the donation her in-laws agreed and then she actually donated to the boy and i show this slide because you know there are a lot of women who are kind of worried about donating blood stem cells thinking you know will they have a child after donating blood stem cells so i went to meet uh, them last year in their uh, village uh, she's got a baby girl uh, danya who's now 1 year old so this is to show that you know people can have a family even after donating blood stem cells whether it is a male donor or a female donor so nothing to worry about it so these are all myths in india because of the lack of awareness you know you go and tell them to donate blood stem cells they'll say no 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 my son is going to get married he will probably not have children anymore at all so these these are some lot of myths that are there in the minds of lot of you know parents and these are our uh, friends heroes who have donated uh, blood stem cells from uh, the ncr region and the guy you see here uh, sumit mahajan is holding a small baby uh, he uh, is from maintri he donated blood stem cells uh, in bangalore and uh, the uh, small kid garvit goel he got treated in bl kapoor uh, hospital and uh, actually we arranged a meeting for the donor and the recipient to meet and when they were started talking what they found out was about 80 years back both uh, garvit's family and sumit's family are from the same village so now you understand why you know ethnicity plays a big role so we need to have donors from various parts of the country so that the representation is good in the registry so that when patients are looking for a match we will really find a match from amongst the same ethnicity and this was an example you know i give uh, even yesterday we had a donor recipient meet in ahmedabad where uh, you know i i told uh, the people there that you know in the last one year we have had three instances where the patients were able to find a match from their own community from their own relatives um uh, and this is an amazing thing you know we do a lot of donor drives for patients and we do the drives when we do the hli typing we find out that you know your cousin is a match your uncle is a match so this happened to us you know three times last year so the, i uh, would now uh, invite uh, gayatri back on stage i have given you a quick overview of uh, datri and i'm sure you know gaurav and uh, narendra gaurav will uh, talk about uh, uh, from the donor side and the recipient side uh, when gayatri calls them on stage